there. So don't say I don't take you to interesting places. <laughs> right. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I, my name is Randy, and this week we are continuing our stay here in Simi Valley at Oak Park Campground, where we're going to continue the tour of the Los Angeles area by heading out to the Peterson Museum and the La Barra Tar Pits. We then go out to the shops at Universal City Burbank, and then we're going to conclude our week with a visit to Griffith Park and the Walt Disney Barn and Forest Lawn in Burbank, California. So, if you haven't seen last week's video, check it out now and let's get going. Another place that we visited was the Peterson Auto Museum, which is located in Hollywood and uh, that was quite interesting as well. And in the museum, they had a special display of James Bond. Not only the cars, but other modes of transportation that they used in several different James Bond movies. Yeah, there were, there were cars, there were snowmobiles, there were boats, there were planes, a lot of different things that really was pretty cool. And we'll show you some video of all of that now. Today we're at the Peterson Automobile Museum in downtown Los Angeles and this museum is built on the premise that Los Angeles is a automobile town. It was designed and built around the automobile and this museum celebrates everything automobile. Uh, it is a really unique experience especially if you get the vault tour which takes you down into the parking garage where they have about 250 cars on display that are not part of the museum's normal display. 
What'd you think of it? I thought it was neat. Um, I especially like the older cars from the 19, early 1900s. And they do have a special James Bond exhibit right now, which is really neat to look at and see all the cars from the different James Bond movies. So that was really fun to see. Yeah, the James Bond uh, part is, is very interesting. They've got a number of uh, Austin Martins and a lot of the uh, specialized vehicles that were used in different movies. And they've got a little bit about the movie pieces, you know, that how they were used. It makes it really interesting. Yeah. So yeah, all in all, it was uh, it was a great visit. It's well worth your time if you're down in LA and uh, looking for something to do. Yeah, we enjoyed it a lot. So yeah. We are walking through what's known as the Labea Tar Pits. This is off of Wushar Boulevard in downtown Los Angeles. And you've probably heard about it. It's been mentioned in movies and the Flintstone cartoons and such like that. But it's actually a real tar pit and it's been here for thousands of years. And they're finding all kinds of animal fossils in the pits from woolly mammoths to saber-toothed tigers and everything. Really kind of neat. So don't say I don't take you to interesting places. <laughs> right. Okay. Today we're off to a Universal City Walk. Not the theme park. We won't be going into the theme park. Just maybe do a little shopping. Maybe get something to eat. Universal City Walk. It's outside the Universal um, Studios theme park, but it's a free attraction. It's basically a shopping area. But we went there and walked around and got some lunch, and that was that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. It's not as big as Disney Village, but it is nice, and plus there's no admission charge. Right. Well, Universal City Walk was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it's not too big, but it was a nice afternoon. It wasn't crowded at all. There are, you know, places to shop at, places to eat. We did take in some food. They do also have a cinema in here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was it was a nice way to spend the afternoon. Yeah, it was a lot of fun getting to walk around the shops and stuff. It's a little bit bigger than, uh, I think, the Disney Village is. But it's on the same order. Yeah. 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 So if you, you know, if you want to avoid the theme park, it's, uh, the city walk is free. Yeah. You can park close by and there is a cost of parking, but we chose to park and have to walk a little ways. Right. We found some public parking that was a little bit of a walk, but, you know, I think it worked better for us because the truck wouldn't have fit in the parking ramp. Yeah. And it's cheaper, too. Yeah. A lot cheaper. Yeah. But all in all, it was uh, it was a nice afternoon. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Okay. All right, let's go. Today's adventure, we are heading back into Los Angeles area. It's our last day 
in this area so we will be checking out some interesting things it's gonna be a little bit of a Disney theme and that there's a couple of Disney places we're going to but it's not theme park or anything like that it's more around the realm of Walt so let's jump in the truck and head on out This part of the park is called Travel Town, and it's a collection of trains. All kind of eclectic, it's all different types of them. There's some steam engines, um, diesels, like you can see right here we're walking by, a um, bunch of cars. It's pretty interesting. Um, some of them are, most of them are not open to go on. I think some of that's probably COVID related. I think there's an engine over here that you can go into and check out. But, like right over here there's a really nice looking steam engine that I wouldn't say it's restored because it probably doesn't run anymore but it's painted up and look really nice I went over here we got to check out can't you just imagine this chugging down the track steam boiling out of the stack making all kinds of noise Well, our travels have taken a slight detour to Travel Town. This wasn't our destination, but it was nearby, and we thought maybe we could get to where we wanted to go from here, but we can't, so we've got to explore a little bit more and find what we're looking for. But in the meantime, we did walk around and check out some of the trains, which was kind of cool. This was Walt Disney's barn. It was his workshop in his backyard. Uh, built in 1950 or 53. I have to fact check myself. I think it was 50. Uh, but it's where he would work his miniature trains. The kind of trains that you see going around. Same right. scale. And when Walt Disney's wife Lillian passed away in the 90s, uh, the house was sold and demolished. And the barn was saved by his daughter and put here in 1999. And has been here ever since. Oh, okay. This is one of the railroad cars. And here's some pictures of when they were building the track around Walt's house. Walt had to have a tunnel put into the backyard for the train to go through because he did not want the train to go through Williams' gardens. So the train was had a tunnel built underneath it. So we're at the Carousel at Griffith Park and this is where Walt brought his daughters Diane and Sharon on weekends to ride the carousel. And he would sit in the bench outside the carousel watch it ride around and get the idea that, gee, wouldn't it be great to have a place where families could take their children on the weekends to enjoy time together as a family? And before you know it, Walt well, Disneyland was created. So this is where it all kind of started. The idea started right here. Yep. And then the last thing we did that afternoon, we went to... Forest Lawn Cemetery and, and oh. visited some of the stars. Right, and many of you may not, you know, cemeteries are, you know, they're sad and, you know, why would you go visit a cemetery? But in Hollywood, it's a little bit different, or, yeah, in this part of Hollywood. This cemetery is the final resting place for many, many celebrities. And we did find a few, and we will show you some video of that. We're touring Forest Lawn Cemetery. Many celebrities are buried here. 
So we're going to see if we can find several of them. This is the site where uh, fame actress Betty Davis is buried. I didn't even know he died. Another uh, singer that actually he died very young, tragically, Andy Gibb. Uh, another member of the Gibbs family, famous for the group, the Bee Gees. We're at the site where famous Liberace is buried. Him, his mother, and his brother George. His brother George. If you're like me and you're uh, a child of the 70s, you remember Freddie Prinze from Chico and the Man. This is where he's buried. Maury Amsterdam, famous for the Dick Van Dyke show, one of the writers. This is Albert Broccoli. He was the one of the producers to start the James Bond franchise, which is now carried on by his daughter. This is the memorial or where both Debbie Reynolds and her daughter, Carrie Fisher, are buried. And sadly, they died a day apart from each other. Yeah, it was said that the loss of Carrie Fisher was so hard on Debbie Reynolds that you know she died the next day. Here lies Michael Clark Duncan. You may remember him from the movie The Green Mile. He was a big gentle giant of an actor. Sadly, we lost him way too soon. This is the gravesite of actor Paul Walker, star of many of the Fast and Furious movies that died tragically um, after a car accident and a fire. What'd he die from? Heart attack? I think so. Final resting place for Bob Kane. He was the original author of Batman for DC Comics. Well, we need to get going. We are Got a little bit of a drive today, not too bad, a few hours, mm -hmm. and then we're off to our next site. Right. And you'll see that in the next video. So if you like this video, what should they do? Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit that bell for notifications so that we notify you when we post new videos. We try to post videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along in our adventures. So until next time. We'll see you down the road, guys. See Take you care. down the road. Bye. Hey everybody, be sure to tune in on our next video where we leave the Los Angeles area and head down the Pacific Coast Highway. Monty gets to meet some new friends at the beach and we take a wrong turn at Pismo Beach and guess what we find. So until then everybody, take care and we will see you down the road.